Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everyone? It's your favorite host back at it again with another episode that's going to blow your mind. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I hope you're ready for some jaw-dropping news because today we've got something truly extraordinary to discuss. You know, we talk about a lot of crazy things happening around the world, but this one takes the cake. Seriously, folks, this is the kind of story that makes you sit up and take notice. Africa and China? They're getting closer than two pigeons on a crumb. And when I say close, I mean they're practically inseparable these days. Imagine this. You're at a party, right? You've been dancing with the same partner for years, but they keep stepping on your toes. It's frustrating, isn't it? You start to wonder if there's someone out there who might be a better fit. Suddenly, someone new walks in. All smooth moves and charming smiles. They catch your eye, and you can't help but feel intrigued. Who is this new dancer? And what can they bring to the floor? They ask you to dance, and before you know it, you're twirling the night away. It's like a breath of fresh air, a new rhythm that makes you feel alive again. That's kind of what's happening between Africa and China. It's a new partnership that's shaking things up and bringing a whole new dynamic to the global stage. The United States has been Africa's main partner for a long time. But lately, things haven't been so smooth. There have been missteps, misunderstandings, and a lot of frustration on both sides. Now, China's come waltzing in, offering big investments, infrastructure projects, and a whole lot of attention. They're bringing their A-game, and Africa is definitely taking notice. And Africa? They're saying, hey, this new partner seems pretty interesting. They're open to exploring this new relationship and seeing where it might lead. Now, I know what you're thinking. Revo now, is this some kind of love triangle? Is Africa caught between two suitors, each vying for their attention? Well, not exactly. It's more like a complex geopolitical tango. And trust me, things are about to get interesting. Let's go. Welcome to Revo, now your go-to channel for all things revolutionary. At Revo Now, we are passionate about exploring the innovations, breakthroughs, and game-changing ideas that are shaping the world today. Our mission is to bring you the latest and most impactful advancements in technology, science, culture, business, and beyond, all in one place. Please subscribe, like, and share our videos. This dance is just getting started, and the moves are going to be fascinating to watch. So stay tuned, folks because this is one story you won't want to miss. For decades, the United States has been a major player in Africa. From the Cold War era to the present day, the US has invested heavily in the continent, aiming to foster development, stability, and democracy. American aid has come in many forms, from food and medical supplies, to educational programs and infrastructure projects. The US military has also been a significant presence, training local forces and providing security assistance. Aid, military support, you name it. The United States has been there, trying to make a difference. Humanitarian missions have been launched to address crises, and development programs have aimed to uplift communities. The US has also been involved in peacekeeping efforts, working to resolve conflicts and promote stability. But somewhere along the way, things started to change. The political landscape in Africa began to shift, and with it, the dynamics of international relationships. African nations started to reassess their alliances and partnerships, looking for alternatives that better suited their evolving needs and aspirations. Some African nations felt like the United States was more interested in lecturing than listening imposing its own values and priorities rather than understanding the unique challenges and perspectives of African countries. This sentiment grew stronger as African leaders voiced their frustrations and sought more equitable partnerships, more focused on its own interests than theirs. The perception that the US was prioritizing its strategic and economic goals over the genuine needs of African nations led to a growing sense of disillusionment. African leaders began to question the benefits of their long-standing relationship with the United States. Meanwhile, China swooped in with a different approach. No lectures, just deals. China's strategy was straightforward and pragmatic, offering tangible benefits without the accompanying political conditions. 
This approach resonated with many African leaders who were eager for rapid development and investment. Need a new highway? China's got you covered. Chinese companies quickly moved in to build critical infrastructure, from roads and bridges to railways and ports. These projects not only improved connectivity, but also created jobs and stimulated local economies. How about a state-of-the-art stadium? No problem. China's willingness to fund and construct large-scale projects, such as sports facilities and government buildings, further endeared them to African leaders. These visible symbols of progress were a testament to China's commitment to supporting African development. This no-strings-attached approach has been pretty appealing to some African leaders, especially those who might not be too keen on Western ideas about democracy and human rights. For leaders seeking to maintain control and avoid external interference, China's non-interventionist stance was particularly attractive. Especially those who might not be too keen on Western ideas about democracy and human rights. The appeal of China's model extended beyond economic benefits. It also offered a political alternative that aligned more closely with the governance styles of some African regimes. But it's not just about the money or the lack of judgment. China's engagement in Africa is multifaceted, encompassing trade, investment and cultural exchange. The financial deals and investments are substantial, but they are part of a broader strategy to build long-term relationships and mutual understanding. China's also offering something else, respect. African leaders have been welcomed with open arms in Beijing, treated as equals and partners. This respectful approach has fostered a sense of dignity and mutual respect, strengthening the bonds between China and African nations. Now, let's dive deeper into these infrastructure projects that are transforming the African landscape. We're talking about a comprehensive overhaul, roads, railways, ports, the whole shebang. These projects are not just about laying down concrete and steel. They're about connecting communities, boosting economies, and creating opportunities. China's been pouring billions into building up Africa's infrastructure, and it's not hard to see why. The transformation is visible everywhere, from bustling cities to remote villages. The impact is profound and far-reaching. For starters, it's good business. China gets access to valuable resources, new markets, and a whole lot of goodwill. These investments pave the way for Chinese companies to tap into Africa's rich mineral reserves and burgeoning consumer base. But it's also a strategic move. A strong Africa means a strong partner. And China knows that in today's interconnected world, you need all the friends you can get. By investing in Africa, China is not just building infrastructure. It's building alliances and securing its influence on the global stage. Plus, let's be real. Who doesn't love a shiny new bridge? These projects are not just functional. They are symbols of progress and development. They bring hope and a sense of pride to local communities. It's like the geopolitical equivalent of showing up to a date with a bouquet of roses and a box of chocolates. These gestures of goodwill go a long way in winning hearts and minds. Except instead of roses, it's a high-speed rail line. And instead of chocolates, it's a deep-water port. Romantic, right? These grand gestures are designed to impress and solidify relationships, ensuring that both parties benefit in the long run. And it's not just about infrastructure. China is also investing in people, scholarships, cultural exchange programs, and training initiatives are all part of the package. This human element ensures that the partnership is sustainable and mutually beneficial. The collaboration extends to various sectors, including technology, education, and healthcare. African entrepreneurs are finding new opportunities to innovate and grow thanks to Chinese investment and expertise. Joint research initiatives are leading to groundbreaking discoveries, and the sharing of knowledge is fostering a spirit of cooperation and mutual respect. Ultimately, these projects are about more than just bricks and mortar. They are about building a brighter future for the next generation creating a legacy of prosperity and collaboration that will endure for years to come. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. This all sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? And you're right to be skeptical. There's a lot of talk about China's debt trap diplomacy. 
The idea is that China intentionally lends money to developing countries, knowing they won't be able to pay it back, and then uses that debt as leverage to get what it wants. Is it a real threat? Maybe. Is it the whole story? Definitely not. The truth is, it's complicated. There are definitely cases where African countries have taken on more debt than they can handle. But there are also plenty of examples where Chinese investment has been genuinely beneficial, helping to boost economies and improve people's lives. Section 5. Beyond the building's trade and investment ties. But it's not just about the big flashy projects. China's also been quietly building up its trade and investment ties with Africa. Chinese companies are investing in everything from agriculture to technology, creating jobs and boosting local economies. And let's not forget about the people-to-people -people connections. More and more Chinese citizens are living and working in Africa, while African students are flocking to China to study. This kind of cultural exchange is essential for building understanding and trust between nations. Section 6. The West's response playing catch-up. So how has the West reacted to all of this? Well, let's just say they haven't exactly been thrilled. The US has accused China of being a predatory lender and warned African countries about the dangers of getting too cosy with Beijing. But here's the thing. Telling African countries who they can and can't be friends with. That's not a good look. If the West wants to counter China's influence, they need to offer more than just warnings and lectures. They need to step up their game, invest in Africa's development, and treat African nations as equal partners, not just aid recipients. Section 7. A Multipolar World Africa's Strategic Choices The truth is, Africa isn't picking sides. They're playing the field. In a world that's increasingly multipolar, with power shifting away from the West, African nations are looking out for their own interests and forming partnerships that benefit them. They're not afraid to play hardball, to negotiate for the best deals, and to walk away from the table if they don't like what they see. And honestly, more power to them. Section 8. The Future of the Relationship Opportunities and Challenges So what does the future hold for Africa and China? Well, that's the million-dollar question. There are definitely challenges ahead. Debt sustainability, environmental concerns, and the potential for exploitation are all real issues that need to be addressed. But there are also incredible opportunities. China's investment has the potential to transform Africa's economy and lift millions out of poverty. And who knows, maybe this unlikely partnership could even help to create a more balanced and equitable global order. Only time will tell. Section nine, join the conversation. All right, folks, that's it for today. But this is a conversation that's just getting started. What do you think about China's growing influence in Africa? Is it a good thing, a bad thing, or somewhere in between? Hit me up in the comments and let me know. And while you're at it, tell me what other global issues you want to unpack next. Until then, stay woke. Subscribe to Revo now and join our vibrant community of forward thinkers, change makers, and revolutionaries.